The American dream is dead and the American dream is alive. And I'm gonna show you in this video how you can actually create your own life, but first we have to dismantle the fact of what we've been programmed to believe. Welcome to my channel, my name is Nicholas Bailey. If you have not hit that subscribe button yet, you're gonna to wanna to do that or do it at the end of the video as well because you're gonna see that the content is very good here for freeing someone. It doesn't matter if right now you're over 50 years old or if you're someone that's in high school or going through college, there's always the thought of like, what is the life that I'm supposed to live? And the painted picture that we've been given throughout our life is called the American dream. The American dream looks like someone who goes to school, does really well, they grow up in a house where you go down to breakfast and you eat food, but you never finish your food for some odd reason. And then you all go to school and the dad goes to work and he's reading his newspaper and all this stuff. And then all of a sudden now we go through school and we look at it and we're like, oh my goodness, like what's the American dream? What are we supposed to do? And that looks like going to school, and then from going to school, you're gonna to wanna to go to college, even though you don't know what you're gonna do or why you wanna go there, let's just go get debt that we can't get outside of. Like we can't get away from this debt, but let's go rack up a bunch of debt so that we go party, not understanding why we're utilizing anything and call it just normal culture, meaning that most people won't go into debt to go buy a house or go buy a car, especially buying assets or investing in themselves. They'll shy away from that, but they'll do the things that the 97% of people are doing, which is what's normal. They'll go into $40,000, $50,000 of student loan debt to be able to do what other people are doing because it's the social normal. Here's a statistic for you. 97% of people right now at age 65 are either dead or dead broke, relying on their friends, family, and government for their main source of income. So if you're following the 97% of people right now, the decisions they're making by going to college and following the social norm, then guess what? Those 97% of people are gonna be either dead or dead broke by the age of 65, relying on their friends, family, and government for their main source of income. But I'm here to tell you that believing that and that life that we've been sold to live, it's not your fault. It's what's been programmed before us. It's what our parents knew before us. And I'm here to say also that the life that we lived back in the day, it just doesn't work anymore, right? And it's not our fault that we don't understand what to do next because we've never been shown what to do next. So it's not your fault either. You look at how we lived for thousands of years, that won't work today. You don't live on a farm with your family and all live in the same house and grow your own food. It just doesn't happen. But if you even look at the last 100 years, that doesn't work for us either because you don't go to a factory and twist on little caps on toothpaste or move one thing from one side to another. There's been different electronic things that have taken care of that. It doesn't even work for just the last 50 years where people went and got a good job and if they worked really, really hard, they could retire by 55 or 65 on a pension at 90% pay that does not exist anymore. Yet we've been sold this lie that the American dream is something that we wanna create for our lives. Now the American dream wasn't always wrong. The American dream was good, it was just good for a time. There's actually a story of Zig Ziglar and Zig Ziglar was like, if you can Google him, he's an amazing, phenomenal, influential man. And he actually talked about one time that his wife during Thanksgiving was cutting a ham and she would cut the end off the ham, she would throw it in the trash and then she would throw the main piece of the ham in the oven. And Zig Ziglar asked his wife this question, said, honey, why do you cut off the edge of the ham? It's perfectly good, why'd you cut it off? She said, because my mom told me to cut it off because it makes the ham taste better. And him being logical, it didn't make any sense to him. He was like the person that just decided to start asking a question of why. And maybe you're asking the question right now of why am I doing the things I'm doing? Why am I going to school? Why am I getting that job? Why am I living where I'm living? Why am I buying the house that I want? Why am I living off all my income? Why am I going into debt? These might be the whys that you're going through because we've been taught something for so long. And so finally he goes, well, why did your mom tell you that? She's like, I don't know, why don't you ask my mom? So Zig Ziglar called his wife's mom, said, mom, your daughter, which is my wife, keeps cutting the end off the ham before she throws it in the oven for Thanksgiving. Why does she do that? She goes, well, because it tastes better. He goes, got it. I understand that it tastes better, but why does it taste better? She goes, I don't know. My mom taught me the same thing, that you cut the end off the ham, makes it taste better. So then finally, Zig calls grandma, his wife's mom's mom, says, Graham's, my wife, who you taught your daughter, who taught my, uh, her daughter, which is my wife, to cut the end off the ham before she throws it in the oven. They said it's because it tastes better. Grandma, why do they cut the end off the ham? And she says, tastes better? Nah, my oven was just too small to fit the ham, so I cut the end off, throw it away so it would fit in the oven. 
And that's what the American dream is right there. The American dream was good for a time when there were smaller ovens, cutting the end out the ham was fine. But now in today's day and age where we have bigger ovens and life has changed, cutting off that ham has no purpose at all, but we've been sold this belief by culture and what everyone else is doing, that one thing is okay to do, and people are still doing it today, even though it doesn't work now, but it did work for a time. Why did it work? Because people were living in a constant, they needed something to look forward to. So when we're going through like the Great Depression, let's say, and people had no vision for their life, they had to create a vision for people, because what they found is when the, what you dream about sometimes can be even better than the actual goal when you accomplish it. Like dreaming about ice cream sometimes can be better than actually eating ice cream because then you actually have to get fat. Dreaming of the house that you want to live in, dreaming of the car that you want in the parking lot, dreaming of how people will perceive you if that were to happen gives you a type of feeling of like, man, I really want this to happen. And a lot of times it can be better than the actual thing that you'd experience. So they gave vision to people, but what is it doing today? Now, men all over America are actually achieving this American dream. They went to school, they went and got the job that everyone else told them to get. They're working 40, 50, 80 hours a week, just like they were told to do. And what's ending up happening? They have the white picket fence, they have all their cars that they want, they have every single thing that's supposed to make them happy and give them the American dream, yet, Suicide inside of America is higher than ever before. They're realizing that when they actually hit that goal of an American dream that was sold to them, that it's actually not making them happy. So maybe you're on the pursuit of that American dream right now and you still see it as a goal in the future that you can achieve. Or maybe you're the person out there right now that's already got the white picket fence, you're already living off 100% of your income, you've realized that you've locked yourself into having to work for the next 40, 50, 60, 70 years, maybe your kids are gonna have to work for you to pay off the freaking debt that you've already bought into to be able to get all these things that you want because they're supposed to make you happy. Now all of a sudden it's like, how can we do things differently? There's a quote out there that says, Sometimes you have to learn, and generally we learn, how to play someone else's music. You play the violin, the guitar, maybe you're on the piano. You learn how to play someone else's music before you learn how to play your own. At some point in our life, it's time to take back, instead of looking at the American dream as the dream for everyone, it's time for us as Americans or as other people in the world to look at our own life and take 100% responsibility and say, what do I want out of life? At first, you play someone else's music. You, you figure out the genre you like. You figure out what do you actually want out of life. Yet, so many of us have bought into what other people have created for us, which in a capitalist economy is gonna drive people, a lot of times, to do things that they should never do. Like, let me ask you this question. What is something that we've been told to do? If you make $6,000 a month, what's your budget to live off of? The budget is $6,000 a month. We get told, or maybe even a little bit more, if you can afford the payments, then you can afford the thing. And we've been told to live off of all of our income. This is what I got told to do. We got told that if we go to college, then we'll get a good job. Well, what's happening? People are not getting a good job after they get out of college. We get told that if we get a good steady job and we get the house we want, we're gonna be fulfilled. Yet people are in jobs that they absolutely hate. We've been taught things like a penny saved is what? A penny earned. No, a penny saved is a penny. And we get taught to go in debt and then save pennies, which are not gonna get people anywhere. And these are things that you guys already know as well because you're already filling in the blank just like you probably did right there. So what can you do leaving this video? What you can do to leaving this video is figuring out what are the things that are your goals and how should you live as a human being in this life? Then I would ask myself this. What are the people out there that are living the life that I wanna live right now, that have the freedom, the income potential, the lifestyle that I wanna live, and I wanna figure out what did they do to be able to get there? Getting a new example on the inside of us rather than the social, the momentum of just social economics, I wanna look at what did they do so I could start playing their music before I learn how to play my own. And go awaken yourself from this place where we're allowing life to live us rather than you living life so that you can start making your own decisions and creating life on your terms so you can actually go out there and achieve happiness. See, we actually transform when we have a goal that's bigger than just the American dream, which is what's needed now because people have been able to hit it too easily. What happens is the progression towards the goal is actually what creates happiness. It, Tony Robbins says that progress equals happiness. Raise that goal, change who you are on the pursuit of that goal, and achieve happiness in the process 
of being there. Again, if you like this video, if you want to awaken some people, send it to your friends, family, go ahead and copy paste that so that they can be awakened from the matrix well and get taught to think differently. Make sure you subscribe. And if you have any questions or any comments, go ahead and comment below this video and I will see you on the next video.